In this video, we will look at the incremental conductance method, which is one of the simplest methods of the maximum power point tracking. We will start by learning the concept for this method and then we will use PSIM software to simulate it. So if you already know the concept, you can skip this section and go straight to the simulation. If I draw a power versus voltage curve for a solar PV panel by assuming there is only one maximum power point, which is both the local and global maximum. As a result, I am ignoring the partial shading conditions. I can divide this simpler case into three regions. The first region is the line where the highest power point is located, followed by the left hand side region and the right hand side region. The change in power with respect to the voltage is greater than zero in the left hand side region if you observe from zero volt to right. When the voltage is increased, the power is increased as well. The change in power with respect to voltage is less than zero on the right hand side region. So if I raise the voltage, the power decreases and vice versa if I lower the voltage, the power increases. The transformation can be seen at the MPP stage where dP by dV equals to zero, which is the condition for maxima. I can rewrite dP by dV as where power is nothing but product of voltage and current. This equation according to the product rule can be rewritten as I plus V times dI by dV. So what we are implying here that if this term is greater than zero then PV panel is operating on the left hand side region. If this term is equal to zero then PV panel is operating at MPP and if it is less than zero then it is operating on the right hand side of the MPP line. If I divide the whole equation by V then what I get is 1 by V times dP by dV equal to I by V plus dI by dV. At MPP dP by dV is equal to zero and I by V can be rewritten as capital I by capital V and dI by dV can be rewritten as delta I by delta V. I can rewrite this equation as I by V equals to minus delta I over delta V. The term delta I by delta V is called the incremental conductance. That's where the name of this method comes from, that is incremental conductance method. So now that we have grasped the fundamental concept, we can use this logic to construct a flow chart in which we can perturb the panel's voltage and observe the incremental conductance. Then determine if we are on the left hand side or on the right hand side and proceed to the maximum power point accordingly. So let's see how we can use this equation to reach the maximum power. The first step is to take the voltage and current samples that is V of K and I of K respectively. Then we can find delta I by subtracting previous sample of I that is I of K minus 1 from the present sample I of K. We can calculate delta V as V of K minus V of K minus 1. First we will check the value of delta V. If it is equal to 0 then we cannot find incremental conductance that is delta I by delta V because it will make the ratio infinity. But if it is not equal to 0 then we can find delta I by delta V. Then we will see that if this ratio is equal to minus I by V or not. In other words is the incremental conductance equal to the negative of the conductance at the present point. If the answer of this condition is yes then it means we are standing at MPP which means we do not need to perturb any parameter. If the answer is no then it means we are not at the MPP. So we need to further check whether we are present at the left hand side or the right hand side of the MPP. In case you remember if delta I by delta V is greater than minus I by V then we are present on the left hand side. So what should we do to move to the MPP? We should increase the panel's voltage V which can be achieved by reducing the value of the duty ratio. Therefore D of N is equal to the previous duty ratio that is D of N minus 1 minus delta D. This delta D is the small perturbation. So this is the action we take if we are on the left hand side. 
But if the answer of this condition is no, then it means we are on the right hand side of the MPP line. So we should decrease the panel's voltage V, which can be achieved by increasing the value of the duty ratio. Therefore, D of N is equal to D of N minus 1 plus delta D. If delta V is equal to 0, then delta I is used to go towards the maximum power point. If delta I is equal to 0, then everything is fine and we are operating at MPP. So we do not need to change the duty ratio D. However, if delta I is not equal to 0, we are not operating at MPP. And in order to reach the maximum power point, we need the value of the incremental conductance which we do not have in this case. As a result, we must perturb V so that delta V does not remain equal to 0. As a consequence, we can either increase or decrease the duty ratio so that delta V is no longer equal to 0 in the next cycle. So what is happening practically? Let's pretend this is our panel's PV curve and we are standing at this point right now. Our MPP is this. So in order to achieve MPP, we must increase the voltage of the panel. To do so, we reduce the duty ratio by applying small perturbations such as minus delta D, minus delta D and so on until we reach the MPP. Once you have arrived this point, you can stop perturbing the duty ratio and set it to one value. And you can stay there until the system isn't disturbed by changes in air radius or temperature. So this was the idea of the incremental conductance method. Now we will move on to the simulation and demonstrate how to convert this flowchart into C code.